The project I uh, came up with, you know, I'm going to be building a mechanical uh, pinball machine. Um, I went to the store and I bought this two foot by four foot piece of plywood. I know in my videos I say I don't use plywood, but this is going to be a lot faster. I don't, uh, due to my, you know, thritis and all that, I'd be gluing it all together. So this is going to be faster and easier for me. Now, I'm going to uh, go ahead. I, this will not fit on my table saw because it's so small. So here's what I set up. Let me get, let me get you a closer picture of this. Okay, what I did is I used these clamps. Now I clamped this, the wood, to the tabletop on both sides so nothing will move. So I'm going to be using a circular saw to cut it. Now the base of this circular saw is roughly five inches. Uh, I want the whole board to be 32. Take off five is at 27. All right, so I measured 27 on this side, 27 on this side, and I clamp them down real tight. From there, I'm going to take the circular saw, start this in, and I'm going to cut it off. Then the blade will wind up right here, and it's going to cut it to 32 inches for me. Okay. Next step is I'm going to uh, basically going to rip it because the grain's running this way. So I'm going to make the table, the top itself, 32 by 18. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and disconnect this. I can go ahead and put this on my table saw because I only have to cut off about six inches or so. Okay, so we'll disconnect this and then we're going to go ahead and rip it down to 18. Alright, I took the 1x4s over to my miter saw, chop saw, whatever you want to call it, and I roughly cut them to the length. Okay, this is an extra inch on each side. And same with this, it's an extra inch. I always have extra, I want extra. Um, the next step is if you look at this wood, See, it's got little chips and stuff in it, and it's not that smooth. If you can see that or not. So, next step is to send all this wood both sides. I'm going to send it through uh, the uh, planer just enough to make it smooth. Now, it'll probably wind up maybe 5 8 that's fine. And from that point, um, I want to go ahead and put the rabbit in here. So, let's send these through the, the uh, planer first. Okay, all the pieces have been uh, sent through the planer. If you notice on both sides, I plane both sides of all the pieces so that you they're all the same height. Now length don't matter yet. Okay, now the next step is, here's the fourth piece. Uh, I'm going to bring the camera and show you what I did there. Okay, what I did was, I laid the piece of wood down, you know, the 18 by 32. Alright, I put a rail across here with this other piece and I clamped it. Now what that does is it's going to push down on this piece. And I did the same to the other side. I need this thing uh, flat as I can to the tabletop. Then I put this piece on which is you know the piece here, that long piece. It's across here all the way and then I clamped it down and then I put a weight. I put the, if you look up here I got a weight that is purpose of it is to um, keep the middle of it down. So everything's crushed down to the tabletop. Then I put wax paper in here. So the next step is to glue this onto here. All right, now the wax paper will keep the glue from this sticking to this. I don't want it to stick to the top yet. I just want this piece to stick to this. So from here, we're gonna go ahead and glue this on. We're gonna do the same with all the other three sides. Okay, I'm gonna kinda of go over this real fast, show you how I did all three. This is the last side to do. The first thing I did is put these on the corners here so I can clamp this down so uh, we get the edge here nice and tight. So we'll put the clamp on here first, tighten it down. That squeezes this corner down. Then do it this side. Okay, now the squeeze the corner. I look across here. Push it here. If this goes down, put a weight on here, but it's not going down, so it's good. Next thing I do is take the piece of wood, give me about uh, Roughly even, eyeball it, roughly even on both sides. And I take the wax paper. Now you don't have to use wax paper if you're going to pull this right off. I am going to pull it right off, but I'm just going to put it on anyway. But all right, now take a little bit of glue, just on the top half, just a very little. On the top half, we'll squeeze through, not much comes out. Okay. Ah, now I line this up towards about the middle of the board. All right, 
right, sit right about there. Now you want to do put a clamp on here, like so. I'm letting that glue set up a bit, that's why I put it on there. Now we know this is going to be level with the bottom of this. Okay, now wax paper's there, flip this up, press it, make sure you got about the same amount of space. Now what I do is I'll push at an angle. Then I'm going to shoot it in with the three nails just to hold it in place. Push, I push down in, uh, at an angle. Okay, now we'll go ahead and take the clamps off. Now, from here, we're going to go ahead and uh, drill a hole, just a little bit smaller than number eight wood screw. And I'm going to screw it right, drill it right next to where the nail hole is. Right next to it. I only go through the first piece of wood, that's it. Then you stop. You'll get a feel over time of how deep you got to go, but I'm only going through this first piece. I'm not going to the second piece at all. Okay. Now we're going to throw some number eights, one inch number eights in here. Now this is taking the place of the, of the nail. Just till it snugs up. Don't have to be super tight. Besides, this is oak. You do it too tight, it's going to snap off the head of the screw. So you can hear it hit. And just stop. Okay. Now I replace the nails with screws. I always like that. I like screws. Uh, screws and glue. I don't like nails, but the nails held this in place while I put the uh, screws in it. Okay. Last uh, thing you do is go over. If there's any glue, make sure you get it all out of there. Both sides. Some did come out on this side. All right. All right, see, we got, that's the fourth piece. Now I'm done with all four of these. Then we're going to go to the next step. Okay, as you can see, we got all this done in all four pieces. Now, the next step is I'm going to go ahead and cross cut this with a miter saw on both ends and uh, what I want to do is get this length the same as this so what I'm going to do is once I cut it I'm going to put these sides on put a clamp and see if it's real tight in here so I'll show you how that goes first thing I'm going to do is I'll cross cut this okay I went and cross cut at both ends I had to recross cut it a couple of times the um, nice thing about a um, miter saw is you could take off paper thin cross cuts. So I kept doing it until uh, I got the gap out of here and here. You tighten this down, snug it up, and then if you have a gap here or here, this is too long. So I kept just barely taking some off until I got the gap out of here. And if you noticed, it moves still, but it also tightens these corners. So I'm going to do the same to the other side. Okay, I got it all clamped together. Now you want to go around and check all four corners. Don't worry about the middle right here. If it's sticking out, we can draw that in later. But just check the four corners to make sure that they are tight. Everything's real tight on the four corners. Okay, from this point, what we're going to do is you notice it's overhanging a little. All four corners are hanging over a little bit. What you want to do is take your pencil and mark across here. All right. Now you mark all four corners, all, all, all of them overhang like this, so mark them all. Right, from that point you take a chop saw, go ahead and cut all four corners off, but leave the pencil mark. Cut it to where you still have a pencil mark. This way, this will be a little longer than this, and we can sand it down later. Okay, that's the next step. Okay, I got all these two pieces here, I cut them down. Now if you noticed, I don't know if you can see the camera, but they're overhanging just a little bit. Both of them overhanging all four corners. Now I clamped this to squeeze this together on the top. Then I clamped 
the bottom to squeeze these joints together. Okay, we want it all tight, so go around and check. Check all four corners to make sure everything's really tight after you do this. And make sure these are flat, tap them, tighten this down medium, then tap it till you get all four corners flat. All right, uh, then you want to check with your square. All right, I'm checking to see if this is 90 with this. If it's not, tap it till you get it 90, both ends. Then go ahead and uh, tighten it down. Now you notice I'm not worried about the middle. I can do that later. The four corners are the main thing to get everything uh, squared up. Now my next step is to go ahead and uh, pilot four holes in this so I can put one screw in each one. I'm only going to put one screw in each corner. Okay, next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and drill these out. I'm going to be using a 5 30 seconds drill bit with a number 8 wood screw. Okay, this is number 8. Length doesn't matter. Number 8 is how big around this part is here. So 5 30 seconds would be perfect. It'll be, have to be screwed in a little bit. It'll be kind of tight, but that's okay. You do not want it loose. Okay, so let's go ahead and drill these out. I'm going to go ahead, and, uh, go ahead and put it together now. I'm not going to put any glue in here yet, but I'm going to be using, it's a number eight again, but it's only one inch long. Don't go any longer because you went in a quarter inch here, and the time you're done, you're getting about a half inch into this. Remember, this is a red oak. It's a real hard wood, so you don't need to go in much, and it's going to hold. Now, a trick for this is everybody carries around natural oil in their hair, uh, rub this in your hair real fast, the uh, screw itself, because the uh, screw will get hot when it uh, goes into this hard wood and what happens is it starts to bind or it'll snap off the head. So throw a little bit of oil out from your hair. Now notice that goes through, line it up with the hole that's in the back, so it'll catch it, and just stop. Okay. You want to go ahead and do all four corners like I just showed you on this one. Take your uh, 5 30 seconds drill bit, put it back in here. Now we're going to drill holes across this uh, support that we put in that's going to hold the top down. So I'm going to go ahead and put uh, five holes on this side, five here, three, and three. Okay, it's probably overkill, but I like to really strap it down. So I'll be drilling it this way. One, two, three, four, five, block. Now be careful, stay away from the screw heads to so go off to the side. So go ahead and uh, uh, drill all those out, then we'll go to the next step. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and run the bead around the whole thing. Okay, got it assembled. I got all the glues and screws around the whole thing. Um, like I s said earlier, this is solid red oak. This is a red oak veneer, plywood on the top. Um, like I said, I use plywood because it's simpler for me and faster because of, uh, of course, my arthritis. But now, the holes here, I'm going to go ahead and uh, drill out some 3 8 uh, oak. Dowels. I'm going to glue those in. Uh, next step is going to design the top for the pinball machine. You know how pinball machines work, so I got to design something on that. So, okay, I'm going to drill some 3 8 plugs. If you notice, this is the plug drill right here. And I set the drill press, it only goes so deep and stops. You don't want to try to go through this whole thing, it's too thick. This will overheat and burn more than cut. Okay, what I'm going to do is put this other bandsaw. I'm going to cut about right in the middle to about here so I can remove these plugs. Now, I could have, if I had a bigger piece, I would have planed this down a half inch so I wouldn't have to do this, but this is your next best bet. Okay, notice all the plugs fell out because now I got four plugs. Okay, we got the plug, and if you noticed, 
I got the line right there. That line's going to run this way. Okay, so I want to put glue on it. You won't need a glue, that's okay. Put it in there. Make sure the line is running straight. Okay, at that point, go ahead and tap it all the way in. Take a damp cloth and uh, wipe off all the glue. All right, you want to do that to the other three corners. All right, we've got all four plugs put in. Next thing I'm going to do is uh, take it over the bench sander with an 80 grit, and I'm going to sand the plug down itself. Not this, but just, I need an 80 grit because it's wood so hard. So I'm going to go ahead and take all four of the plugs down level. From the 80, I'll do a 120, and then, uh, of course, a 220, and so on and so forth. Okay, I got the plugs sanded down. I got all four corners sanded down. Now I went online at a pinball machine place and I ordered uh, the plunger and it comes with everything needed. Uh, some bouncers that the balls can bounce off of. Uh, these are for the flippers. Then I bought six uh, chrome 5.8 uh, balls for this top. Now just this stuff here is like 40 bucks and all the wood I'm at 70 for the wood so we're about $110 into this so far. Alright next step is uh, if you noticed this comes with a sleeve here now this is the guide for this so I got to support that whole sleeve so I'm gonna take the one by four I got about six feet left of oak I'm gonna go ahead and uh, cut it down to one piece that goes all the way across at 20 inches then I'm gonna cut another piece about three inches long this way take up this space then another piece that comes down so I can strap it here and give this support when you pull it back. Okay, so I'm going to rip the one by four in half. That'll give me the full length of this one and the full length of the back one. And then uh, I'll cut two little pieces off for here. Take number eight, take number eight. Okay, came up with this design. I set the plunger across here. Now you noticed this has to be totally supported, so I got three pieces to support the, the guide for the plunger. Um, the other thing, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take these two pieces and I'm going to sand them down and round them, make them look good. Then I'm going to glue the two together. The second step is to take this piece, put 45s on each end, and cut a rabbit out across here for the, the glass to go into. Okay, so I'll probably do a quarter inch, so I uh, use quarter inch glass on it. Okay, from that point, I'm going to take this piece and I'm going to glue it down to this piece with three wood screws and then I'm going to plug those wood screws so you don't see them. See, from that point, once this dries, I can actually sand this whole surface down. This will not be on there yet. If I can sand this whole surface down, then I can put this on last. All right, I glued uh, this together after I'm done sanding it, so I'll take it apart. Now, here's what it kind of looks like. If you uh, see, so you got all the edges done. The only edge it didn't do is the back, because that's going to be um, put right onto here. Okay. Um, I already cut these out, all four of them. I got 45s put on them, and I got the rabbit put in there. That's where the the um, glass is going to go. Uh, next step, uh, also too, I forgot, I did round all the three edges. I didn't do this edge, but around the other three, because this edge I want flat, because this is going to go on there, so I want it flat. Okay, my next step is to bring this out flat. I want it flat with the level with this, and then what I'm going to do is, first I'm going to take this over the drill press, I'm going to put this bit in it. This bit's great, because it's flat across, it cuts great, smooth. So when I put these uh, button plugs in, the 3 8 button plugs, you know, they'll sit right in there. Okay, so first I'm going to drill for these, and then I'm going to go all the way through, and I'm probably going to put a number 8. And I only need to go in maybe a quarter inch, because this wood's so strong. I'm not going to glue it yet. I'm just going to go ahead and strap it down so I can get this set up. Okay, I got this uh, glued onto here. Now what I did was this this set overnight 
when they did this piece was not strapped to here yet but I glued all three pieces together and you notice I got the uh, 3 8 drilled out for the plugs themselves okay now I finished sanding this side and this side because I can't get in here as good now this has all been glued down and tightened down this is glued to all these pieces are glued together now what I had to do is I had to engineer this to where this part doesn't touch down here and neither does the spring but it's high enough up to where it's going to hit the ball right in the center okay if you look had to engineer it to where that's going to hit the center of the ball <coughs> excuse me okay so I got that done now there's a sleeve in here it's a plastic sleeve that came with this all right now I engineered that and I put this up here and what happens is too far this is too far away from this okay I misjudged that but I got the height right so next step is I'm gonna send this through the planer get it smooth and I'm gonna glue it glue it onto here like so and when it dries I can keep sending this through the planer until I get the thickness I need in here so the ball will still stay in the center see right now you notice not in the center so it's, it's got to come over until it gets about here okay so I'm gonna go ahead plane this and glue it on then I'm gonna keep sending it through the planer until I get exactly where I want it on the middle of this ball okay I got this um, piece here glued to this one and you notice it's not very big it's only like a half by five eighths so I put a whole lot of clamps when I glued this put a whole lot of clamps down there so it would be solid when I'm done with it because it's so thin it's going to not tighten down in certain areas so I used a lot of clamps there now this I got this cut out and this is not put in yet but I'm going to go ahead and um, get this shaped uh, to the size I need it now I can't do that until I take this one off and I'm going to keep uh, planing this down until I get the right thickness in there All right, my next step is, well, I already did it. What I did was I um, went and planed this and surfaced it. Everything I needed to get the right width here. So I'm going to set this down here, put this up, and then I'm going to clamp it. If you noticed, if you look at it, you see how the ball just moves a little bit? Remember, this will swell up in the winter because of moisture, so you don't want it too tight. All right, so if I, what I do is, okay, from there I'm going to go ahead and clamp this all the way down. Then I'm going to pilot my holes and then put in my screws. And I'm not going to glue this down yet, and this is not glued yet. This is just screwed down. It's not glued. i got to take these apart and sand and stuff. So all I'm going to do is get it set up. Okay, I got this all drilled out. Uh, if you noticed, I'm going to be using brass screws to the top, so it'll give it a little design. Now the screw itself, I got it so it moves in and out like so. Now this hole's half the size of this one because I just wanted to lock them down like, like this. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and put this in here for the spacer. Then I'm going to clamp this all the way down and run the screws in just to get them set up. I don't want to glue it yet. Okay, I took off the clamps. You notice I got the screws on here now. They, they, they look nice. They're going to be designed. Now I'm going to go ahead and pull this out. This gives it the perfect uh, width all the way across. Now if you notice, you, you put it in a ball in there, and you put the plunger through here, it, now you're, uh, it shoots right across really smooth, and it's just perfect. Uh, now these, this will come off and this will come off because I want to sand this, and then I'll glue them later. Uh, next step is to engineer the flippers. I have no idea yet what I'm doing on that. Okay, finally got the, the flippers figured out. Okay, this is not ready yet, but if you noticed, um, I did drill an eighth inch hole. You can barely see the peg here, but this goes through about three quarters of the way to give it extra strength on the three eighths um, dowel that's going through this. Okay, now this one's ready to go, and if you watch how it works, nice and smooth. 
Okay, let me show you the bottom of this real fast. If you, um, what I had to do is there's a bearing. Okay, I got the bearing on here with the 3 8 Then I built this with another bearing that goes in here. This goes through and then this uh, connects onto that. Now I got a hole here to put my eighth inch pegs through here. Once I glue this, it gives it extra strength on top of it. Okay, let me show you the bottom of this. Okay, here's the underside, how, what I came up with. If you notice, okay, none of this is fastened together. This all come apart. I haven't glued nothing or put any uh, eighth inch dowels and nothing. And it works really great. So once I get it, notice how this moves. Certain things move and stuff. See how they move? That's okay, because uh, once I get it all strapped in, it's going to be really good, really, uh, how do you call it, uh, smooth, but it'll have enough play where over time it doesn't uh, heat up and start to create friction. So what I did is I got some brass washers and I put one in here and one in here. Now there's a brass sleeve that goes through this part that rotates inside there, so that'll keep friction low. I got the rubber pad on both sides, the old rubber pad here and one here, so it doesn't make as much noise when you're using it. Okay, so the next step is to take this and transfer it to the tabletop. Okay, I drilled the holes out here and the one here for the ball to drop in if you miss on the flipper. So now here's the, the flipper you just saw. I'll be wrapping this around here, which I got at a pinball place. You wrap this around that. Okay, now if you notice, I got the holes drilled out, so these set down in there like so. All right, and we got this. So, as you saw earlier, I'm going to take all the the flipper parts out of the other sample one that I built, and I'll be putting it into this. All right, here's where I'm sitting at so far. I got the flippers uh, totally done. All right, I got this part is not going to be put on yet and neither is this part. The purpose is I got to put this together and you can't get in there otherwise. So I'm not doing that yet. Uh, if you notice on the flippers, you got them work real good there. So the next step is um, I want to show you the back part of this. Okay, I want to show you how I engineered this. Okay, here's your uh, flipper that goes in and out. It's spring-loaded here. Now, if you look, there's your flipper on, uh, operates the flipper. Now, this has been glued together here, and I put a dowel, eighth-inch dowel through there for strength. Then I got the two stops set up like this, so it stops both directions. So, what I did is I engineered this part here. If you look at it, it's got a brass sleeve. And it's got a brass wash on this. All right now, the brass sleeve goes through this like so. Then I put two. You notice I got two brass washers on the back side of this. All right, so there's two on the back side and one on the front. Then you take it and it goes inserts into here like so. Now I can adjust this. See, it's too tight right now, so I can adjust this a little bit so where this actually moves a little bit. All right, so you're all set now. There's your flipper. I'm not going to put this totally together yet because I might have to take it apart depending on how I'm going to engineer the underside of this when it comes to the ball chute. So, but I wanted to show you how this was put together. Okay, what I did here is I took a one by eight piece of oak and I uh, figured out the arch by just drawing on it, okay, then cutting it out with the jigsaw, then of course sanding it on uh, the drill press with a, uh, you know, spindle sander. Uh, now what I did here is countersink these two with a 3 8 hole because I want to put a, a uh, plug in each one of these for design. Now these two sides are strapped in just with the screws and nothing's glued yet. So I made it fit in perfect like this. Now I'm going to screw this down like so, and then the back piece will go across here and screw in to this so you can take this back piece out and replace the 
plexiglass when needed. Okay, this will be the only part that will come off this whole machine. Okay, the next step is to go ahead and put it all together temporary and uh, see how it works. Okay, what I did is engineered all the different uh, places that I want to put the holes, you know, for the ball to drop in. Now, none of this stuff is finished yet. Uh, you notice it's just kind of sitting there, but what I do next is I'm going to take all these apart and take them off and sand them all down. And then from that point, I want to drill the holes all the way through. And then I'm also going to uh, put a hole on the side here so that the ball itself can, you can drop the ball in on the side and, it, and the ball will come here. And then I got to make a wooden, I put this on here so I can make a wooden flap, the one way wooden flap across here. From that point, I'm going to go ahead and build the bottom channel so the ball, when it goes through the hole, uh, I'm guessing I'm going to have them come out on this side and then the ones you're ready to use will be sitting here. So that's my next step. Now you notice I took a uh, brass pipe and I cut probably five eighths in length and that's going to go through here. Now I got to cut these off because they're too tall but that will go through to give it support so when I tighten down the screw it doesn't squish this. It'll actually tighten down on the brass. Okay, I temporarily put the whole thing together. Uh, kind of complex in a way because I had to get all this lined up right. I got a, a little one-way uh, flapper here so when the ball goes through it can't come back. I engineered that out of oak. Okay, then I got a little rubber stopper on it just to take up some of the shock. Okay, now these bumpers, I had to um, cut them down because they were too tall. So once I put the plexiglass in, it would hit. So I had to cut them down. I cut off about a 3 sixteenths of an inch on them. I got a number 10 uh, wood screw that's panhead brass, so they look nice. Now, what I did on this is I took um, the pipe cutter here, and I cut these down to that length. Then I inserted them inside the plastic. Now I put black on here because that's the bottom. That's the side I cut. I don't want to make sure that when you put it in there that it squishes it down. Now remember the brass part's a little shorter than this piece. Then you got it like that. That's the way it's going to look when it's tight. Now that's all done there. Now these pieces here, I had cut them all out and uh, painted them. Now what I did was I used this blue uh, masking tape which works great. Uh, the regular masking tape I don't like because when you go to tear it off it actually tears. So this stuck through, sticks real good to it. So I lined the whole thing with that and I spray painted them. That's how what you get on this. Next design is to, uh, well not design but next step is to uh, take this all apart. Everything comes off then I'm going to sand this with a 220 and I'm going to go ahead and finish just the top of this. Reason is there's too many parts in here to go around and try to do it so I'm going to take it all apart and finish the top. Pretty well got it engineered. Uh, the flippers work great. Okay, I painted them red too to match this uh, setup. Now these were not drilled through yet because I, every time I experimented with this the balls dropped there I wouldn't have to try to find it. So uh, I engineered it so where I was kind of watching where the ball would go at all times to see where I want to put these. Okay, I'm going to finish this off with the tongue oil. Same with these. So once it's dried, I put about five coats on it. Once it's dry, then I can put this whole thing together. I still got to sand around here um, like this. I'll probably touch up sanding on these and I got to finish them off. So I'm going to do everything separate. Then I can go ahead and put this together. And then from that point, I'm going to go ahead and build a channel underneath it that when the ball drops through, it's going to come up, drop through here and it's going to come out here somewhere. Okay, I decided not to finish the top yet, so I took everything off. You can see it all over there, kind of set up the way it would be over here. Uh, what I did is I went over the table saw and, uh, well, first of all, I purchased redwood, okay, some 2 by 6 redwood. And uh, these are going to be the channels underneath here. I use red for two reasons. One, it's a little cheaper. Two, it's soft wood, so it's easier to work with. 
Okay, so I channel it out on the, the table saw, move the fence over slowly but surely to get all this cut out and the depth. Okay, then I sent it through the uh, planer and got it the thickness I needed and height I needed. Um, this is soft wood, so you got to be real careful when you're working with it. But I went and um, put one channel in here so far across here. I'll show you in a minute, but this is barely slanted. And I want to make sure it works. So, and it works. From that point, I'm going to engineer the rest of them. So let me show you the bottom of what I did there. Okay, so here's what I did. Um, up for the first channel is across here. Comes out here, then that goes across here to that hole I just dropped it in. Now from here, I'm going to take these. I'm going to make one cross for both of these, channeling it into here. Then I'll take another one. I'm going to channel it in here and so forth on this one here. So it'll be channeled in three different directions on this. Uh, you're going to have to. Well, I use number six wood screw here. Okay. I'll do a, put a little glue when the time's right on it, but. Do not tighten these down very tight because it will split the redwood. Remember, it's a soft wood, so you don't want much pressure. Okay, so the next step is I'm going to engineer the rest of these um, to go ahead and channel this down and then uh, go from there. Okay, as you can see here, I set all the pieces up the way they'll be on the board itself. These are all done. They're shaped and designed the way I like them. All right, uh, I've got these all painted on just the tops only. All right, so this is all ready to go. Now, if you go over to the table, I went and glued all this stuff together and put a pin through this. I put a pin over here through this. That uh, eighth inch dowel pin is going to really strengthen this. Now, you notice I left them so they can move. You want them to move a little bit so they're nice and free. Okay, so this is totally done here. Now, the other step is the channel for the balls to roll down in. If you look here, what I did was reverse this. If you, uh, this will be underneath the top. So I reversed it so I could see how everything's going to work. And if you look here, the ball's going to roll down this side and go like this. So I rounded these off here. Okay, and then from there, the, drop, the ball will drop over here and roll over here. So I rounded these off. Then it's going to roll against this wall, come across here, and I rounded these. Okay, so I got everything rounded. So if the ball comes this way of this one, it'll be rounded here and go down. Now, what I did was I drilled a 9 64th hole here on these. This, I'm going to do the same here and on these other ones. Okay. It's made to fit in number six wood screw. If you notice, it fits in pretty good. You want it loose like that. Okay, from uh, that point, I did sand. I took an 80 grit and I sanded all these corners round to make sure that the ball is going to flow down evenly. And I, I sanded the channels themselves too in here. So everything's sanded. Next step is to drill these out and then I'm going to put it on the tabletop itself. All right, next step is, I'm going to go ahead and uh, tongue oil just the top for now. I want to do it about four or five coats. I notice I got nothing in here because it's a lot easier to do this. So, like you said, right through the circles, push down, and do the entire top. Okay, I want to go over a few things on the scoring system that I got for the pinball machine. Um, if you notice, I got three different colors. I got red, blue, and green. All right, uh, each uh, person that plays is going to have five balls, so they'll have five chances. Now, the odds of getting five, all five in the reds are pretty slim, but I want to have five each of these colors just in case. So I'm going to have fif 15 total here, which is five colors for each one of these three. Now, I found these wheels are made for trucks and cars. It's a quarter inch hole. But on the peg, it fits so tight you can't turn it. So what I did is I put it in a clamp like so and I tightened it down. And then I went to the next size up. You need this size drill bit set to go up the next size from a quarter to 17 64ths. I put this in the drill, drill press and I drilled every one of these out. 
Now, since they're drilled out, they slide on this. And so I put tape to keep from sliding so I can spray paint them. Now, once I've done spray painting, see, I walk over here and I just put them in here, and this way they can dry real good. All right, now we got about uh, five of each color, and um, this will be the scoreboard uh, for scoring. And you can make up whatever you want. You know, if you want 100 for this, and 500 for this, and 200 for that, that's up to you. Okay, as you see here, I got all the parts all cut out and they're all done now. Now they have to be sanded down and then uh, I got to put a, about five coats of tongue oil on everything. Now I kept everything apart. Nothing's put together. The simple fact it would be a lot easier to put uh, tongue oil on all this in pieces. Then when it's all dried, it can put it together. Now you notice here, I got these. They're going to screw on here with uh, brass screws. And they go across. What happens is this bar here, this brass bar is going to insert in here like so. All right, then it's going to go through all of them and insert on the other side at about this height. From that point, these are going to go through, slide on. Now notice I made them bigger, the hole was bigger on these on purpose so it slide real easy, see. That'll be your scoring points. And then also uh, completed the drop section here. This is for when the ball comes out the back. It runs into this and rolls down. This will catch the ball, the five balls that you're playing with when they come out if you don't get any score. Um, I mean, this is if you get a score, it'll come out here. Now this is on the side. This will slant too a little bit. There's where you store the five balls and you slide one in, pop it in, and pull your plunger back. Okay, so these are all, everything's done. Now, the legs, I got two of the short ones for the front. Of course, the back are longer. I engineered, I found this, these turn nice and firm, which is a nylon piece in it, which is good. You don't want them to turn to good. And it's got a rubber pad on the bottom. I cut out a notch here so the table will sit on that notch. Now I use brass on this uh, bolt itself, and then I use a wing net so these legs can be taken off and put back whenever you want. So if you ever want to store it, the legs are not in the way. Okay, from this point, it's time to sand everything and then probably at least four coats of tongue oil on everything. From that point, I'll put it together. Well, as you can see here, here's all the parts that are going to be put on this. Now, I did four coats of tongue oil. What I did was I put the, I sanded everything with a 400, then I put the first coat on it. From there, I let it dry overnight, and then I used the 400 on every piece again, but real lightly, sand it real lightly, and keep doing that until you get four coats. All right, uh, the different parts uh, for the table itself were made out of oak. Everything is oak on here except the top, it's plywood oak. Um, I put number eight wood screws in here so I could pick these up and uh, put the tongue oil on it easier. Now, uh, if you look here, I put tape around here so the tongue oil wouldn't get on the rubber part. Now I went over the, my receipts, and there's of course four bearings in here. You got the plexiglass top, and all the parts you see here, and it came to around $230 for uh, parts and material. Now if you look under here, this is done. All I'm going to do is uh, change these screws out, put all pan head screws on this, so it looks a little better. I'm not going to glue it. I'm just going to put it on there. You see all these parts here. Everything's done. Now what I'm going to do is let this dry for about two days. From that point, I'm going to go ahead and put everything together.
Okay, I wanted to film this because these were the old ones I had up here. Uh, these four here. And they were individually two screws in each one of them into this. I didn't like the design, plus these were too skinny. I didn't like how I did this part, so I redid it. I wanted to show everybody that I redid this whole back piece. Now what happens, you take these three screws out, the whole thing comes off. Uh, take these two screws, this will come off, and then you can replace the plexiglass when it ever gets uh, broken or scratched or whatever. So, all right, from here we're going to play the game. Okay, if you noticed, um, I got red, green, and blue. And I got a red, I got a green here, and two blues. Um, you can make them, I'm going to make them, I did it this way so I can make it any amount uh, I want on each one. So I'm going to make the red 100 because it's the hardest. And then I'll make the green um, 75, I'll make the blue 50. So we got six balls to play with here. So I go first and of course whoever is behind me goes second, third, and you can have a competition to see who wins. Okay, so let's uh, go ahead and go for this. Take the ball, all you have to do is slide it over. And then, uh, ah. Wow, that was fast. <laughs> pick the ball up. I mean, anyway, just, just light it right in. Ah. Now, there's a slot over here where the balls come out. I'll show you in a second on the screen. Last one, so far I got nothing, as you can tell. Yeah. Well, now the next person goes. I got nothing on that one. So, let me uh, move the camera over here and show you where the balls came out. As you can see, there's where they Return from that point, you take them, put them back on the side, and play your next game. I appreciate everybody watching. Uh, hope you enjoyed, and have a great day, and we'll see you soon.